In this lecture, we talk about the two basic ways to diversify, and then there's clearly a mid-range between them. But you could either decide to buy businesses that are related to one another in some manner or form, how they do business, what they do, what industry they're in, or they're unrelated, and they tend to complement or balance each other out in terms of financial measures, which is an unrelated investment. So when we think about pursuing them, if you're an industrial company, public company, whatever, related, you buy similar industries, that sort of thing. However, there are times when you want to balance out perhaps the uh, investments that you're in, perhaps a family office that runs businesses for, uh, to manage an individual or a family, uh, family's wealth, where there is also a money manager role in it. And that's sometimes what unrelated business investment is all about. But there are other factors as well. And then there's this middle range where you might have a bunch of related business in a cluster and then a few less related businesses. Um, there's logic behind each of these. The general rule is, it's, is related diversification makes sense on the face of it. Unrelated diversification uh, has more challenge associated with it and a lot more manager involvement. The notion of the parent company having to know what it's doing and be very good at managing a, a collection of unrelated businesses. And we'll talk about that later. Related businesses potentially have some sort of connect, uh, uh, competitive uh, interaction that where success in one leads to or implies success in another. Whereas unrelated businesses tend to have different faces in the market, but there may be some value in some similar value in, in some of the back office activities, the logistics, supply chain, and the like. They're not related per se in terms of the business they're in, but you can find some, some ways to take advantage of economies of scale. And that's the, um, the core align, alignment here. So you look at businesses and try to identify strategic fit. Strategic fit means that you have some, in some way there's synergy such that the whole, the fact that you're operating two or three or five or ten businesses, that they fit together in a way that they're worth more than they would be independently individually. That's the notion of strategic fit. When you think about related diversification, that means that you have some skill or capability. Perhaps it's, a, it's technology, innovation like Apple has. Uh, Nike has selling different products marketing under armor. Um, perhaps it's a retail skill, the ability to warehouse, purchase, sell, ship, distribute, and store at low cost, like uh, Walmart has, um, where they would diversify. Years ago, they diversified from just uh, dry goods into groceries as well, taking advantage of some of this back office. They have some specialized resource or capability that you can apply to another industry. Um, and based upon that, the fact that you're particularly good, it's your competitive advantage, you can apply that to another industry, and it works there too, right? So that's a related diversification idea, something specialized that you can leverage in your diversification. There are also generalized resources that you get economies of scale from, but you don't really have, a con per se, a competitive advantage. You don't do it better than others. It's just since you're so much bigger, you have some advantages of opening up a store since you already have a warehouse nearby, if you will. Those are, uh, you, you can leverage generalized resources in unrelated assets or unrelated purchasing. If you have very good warehousing and you have in the warehouses all over the country and you have a shoe store, you may want to go into another kind of retail store because you already have the distribution uh, infrastructure in place. You don't have to purchase all of that, so you can just build off of those complementary assets and instead of just selling shoes, maybe you have it. Uh, you start. You sell something totally unrelated, like um, uh, I don't know, a, a pet shop or something like that. It doesn't seem to make sense on the surface. There are unrelated industries, but by the virtue of the fact that you have these generalized resources of uh, of uh, warehousing and distribution, logistics, contracts, and relationships, uh, you might be able to get some benefit associated with it. So those are the generalized resources. In the next 
discussion, we'll get in a little more deeply and talk about the value chain. Because when you think about both these specialized resources and the generalized resources, when you really lay them out for each of the business units, you can see how the value chains interact. And based upon that, you can start to understand if you will, really will be able to pull additional value, synergy, uh, out, of, uh, out of a business in another industry or in another sector of some kind by bringing it into the family, if you will, and then taking the right internal actions to make the sum of the parts greater than the individual items. We'll talk about that in value chain strategies next.